All right. Um, well, welcome to our December monthly meeting. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and getting ready for the holidays. Uh, so let's get started with our monthly meeting. And this will be for our, and this is a holiday edition for our um, NUB meeting. So this is supposed to be a science, scientific theme, um, Christmas decoration. So we have Christmas trees that are made of different molecules. And then we have Christmas in outer space in different galaxies um, with our traditional earthly decorations as well. I thought that was a pretty cool image. And so our plan for today, a couple of things. We'll um, go over our usual announcements and calls for participations. We'll also have a holiday icebreaker. So uh, hope you're ready to participate. And then we'll also be talking about um, our allocation year transition. And we'll have um, Helen from our user engagement group and training team to talk about the allocation year transition, as well as talking about our nurse HPC training strategy um, currently and moving forward in the future. So uh, as usual, please feel free to participate, um, ask questions, raise your hand, um, engage as much as possible. And any questions you have that you think of later, feel free to post them in our nurse Slack. So let's just get started with some holiday icebreakers. Um, again, some more uh, science kind of decorations with molecules floating with snowflakes. And then you have a glass of molecules as well. <laughs> and a couple of um, DNA helix strands there too. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so this is uh, one of my favorite questions I like to ask people. And um, I will ask the question, uh, the question is, what is your favorite Christmas holiday, um, Christmas or holiday gift? Or if you don't celebrate or recognize the holidays, a gift in general that you have received and why? And okay, I'll go first and I'll share my reasoning why. And my favorite gift was probably my first computer circa 93, 94. It was, it was like a Tandy computer, um, very old school that I think my dad got from like Radio Shack or something. And the story I like to tell is for Christmas, I wanted to go to space camp. My Christmas present, I wanted to be able to go to space camp in the summer. I'm from South Georgia, Alabama. So space camp was pretty close. But one of my friends had got a computer for their birthday. And so I told my dad I wanted a computer. So he said I had a choice between space camp or a computer. And I chose a computer. This is supposed to be an image representing. And it was like a, it was a Tandy Windows 93, something like that. Um, so that is my favorite gift because it opened my it um, opened up my curiosity and interest in learning and science. So if anyone else would like to maybe share. Not all at once. Well, Dr. Rebecca, would you like to share your favorite gift? Yes. Um, so I was trying to remember exactly when it was, but um, I received um, a really nice stereo one year, um, and I love music, and so it, it even had a CD player and everything, very fancy. So I, I got to listen to really great music with good sound on CDs. And that was in the similar time frame, the 1990s. Awesome. That's a good one. And, you know, actually, that would probably have been my second thing. Also similar, it was uh, when I was probably about seven or eight, I got a piano. And that was 
Um, the first musical instrument that I got and learned how to play and took piano lessons and actually just started back taking piano lessons. So, anybody else? Okay, well, we have two more icebreaker questions as well. So if we don't get any participation, I'm going to have to start calling on people. So let's see. So another, we'll hear both of these questions. Um, if you have any, what is your favorite, favorite annual holiday tradition or activity? And also, what is your most important goal or New Year's resolution for 2024 and why? And I'll go with my favorite annual holiday tradition is each year, um, me and my mom like to experiment with a new type of holiday inspired um, dish. Um, so for this year, actually, we don't, I don't know what we're gonna do for Christmas, but for Thanksgiving, um, we did a seafood uh, cornbread stuffing dressing mix. So if you're Thanksgiving, if you, you know, traditionally you have your turkey and stuffing and dressing and stuff. And so we did a seafood version of it because I don't eat meat anymore, but I started back eating seafood. So last year we did a caramel red velvet bun cake. So that was for Christmas. Anyone else want to sh share for either one of the questions, favorite annual tradition or Resolution. Okay, William said he wants to finish up the data science class that he bought, that you bought two years ago and then never started. Okay, well, better late than never. Anyone else? Uh, I think my favorite holiday tradition is in my family. What we do is um, we take the, we divide up the time that we have off together and each day becomes like one person's day. So like if it's my day then everybody has to do whatever activities that I want that day. Or if it's your day, we do whatever you want that day. So it's, it's pretty nice. You get to really um, spend time with, people that you love, I think is, is pretty important. Yeah. And I like that, you know, that's kind of like spending time and being intentional with the time you spend. So cool. In Anyone our else? Day, after mm -hmm. each Christmas Eve meal, we all, all dress warm and drive in the car and start, go out, watch beautiful um, lightings, Christmas lights, uh, the, we search first, uh, which are you know best light uh, lights um, decorations in um, neighborhood. A little bit sometimes can go a little bit further, but just then and we we go out and and we take our dog as well, and that's taken and then go back in the town and also drive around the town, then come home and play some games. Oh, that's nice. I love that. Anyone else want to share? What about anyone have an important New Year's resolution that they want to work on? Let's see if we can I call on anyone. Uh, what about Jeffrey? You want to share either a no holiday pressure. <laughs> No pressure. No. Um, what about, let's see, uh, Peter. Peter, would you like to share either a favorite, favorite tradition or resolution that you have for the upcoming year? I'm not sure if it's a favorite tradition, but it's kind of the last 10, 15 years a tradition that I spend a lot of time over the end of year finishing up unused computer time at either NERSC or Argon or Oak Ridge. Um, so maybe a resolution is use it in a more timely fashion next year, but somehow there's always some left at the end. And I remember one year, I don't know how long ago, but 
every time I thought I'd almost used the nurse allocation, Francesca Verdier would give us additional CPU time because, hey, we were using it. So maybe one of you can tell me when that was because she retired a long time ago, I think. Okay. Well, we got yeah, she, she retired like um, maybe in 2015, so a while yeah, ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Almost before then. <laughs> okay, and we got to get you a workflow to make sure you efficiently use everything. Man. Nah, it doesn't, doesn't work that way for me. <laughs> it never does, but you know. You try. Also, I'm often dependent on... on um, developments uh, from collaborators and that it, it's not just me doing my own research it's part right. of the collaboration so if if you don't have the input you can't do the calculations right <laughs> scientific struggles okay well thank you everyone for sharing um feel free to also add that add any of the responses to either the nurse user slack or you can add it in the chat too if you Think of something a little bit later that you want to share. So we will continue on um, and we will continue just with a few nurse updates and announcements. So remember our allocation year for 2024 begins on January 17th. Um, later we'll have um, Helen talking about the allocation year transition. Um, 2024 ERCAP allocations will be announced later this week. And within our weekly email, you can find updates for various um, updates, including um, the DOE Office of Science annual user stats call, um, updates to the nurse shale support policy, and also note that our science gateways um, using PHP are now going to be portal.nurse.gov. So again, all of the more details about each of these updates will are in our weekly email. So if you're not reading your weekly email, then you know you're you're missing out on all the good information. Read your emails. <laughs> so um, some announcement for uh, calls for participation um, from the Krell Institute. We have the um, James Cronus Award in Leadership, Community Building, and Communication. Um, this is aimed for people to nominate a colleague who is a mid-career scientist or engineer that has had a impact in leadership, community building, or science communication. Uh, those nomination, nominations are due by December 31st. Uh, the links and specific details, again, are in the weekly email, uh, as well as a reminder, applications for the DOE Computational Science Graduate Fellowship are now open. So uh, if you have any uh, graduate students or anyone that you know would be eligible for this, I um, encourage them to apply for it. And again, that information is also in the weekly email as well. Hey, so, Charles, I just want to go back to that other one, just one second. And mm -hmm. I just want everybody to know the James Coronas Award. Um, I was actually the inaugural winner of it. And so I would be really excited if another nurse user, you know, became the next winner. That would be really awesome. You were the very first. I was. Wow. Yeah. That is 2019. History. Very cool. That is history. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, good. Yeah, so... You know, let's keep the tradition going. Get some more nurse users and nurse people nominated. Awesome. Um, meetings and trainings. Um, so actually now the Cocos user group meeting is going on in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I was planning to attend, but they got a little full actually. So if you are interested in learning more about Cocos, uh, please reach out to the point of contacts within the weekly email to see what you might have missed in um, this user group meeting. Uh, and I just put it there for uh, to bring attention to that it's occurring now. And if you weren't aware, um, you want to, you probably can reach out and see what was discussed in the um, output of it. Um, also, applications are now open to for the E3SM tutorial workshop. 
So this will be the first in-person tutorial, tutorial workshop for this scientific application code, and it will include various tutorials focusing on lectures about Earth system simulation and the modeling components of the application, uh, practical sessions on running it, as well as best practices for utilizing the model and potentially contributing to its development. And I know we've had an increase in, I think, nurse users using this application. So uh, if you are using it, it would be, this is a good activity, a good um, tutorial workshop to attend. Okay, and again, um, please be sure to check the weekly email for more details about each of these opportunities, as well as information on links and registration. And so uh, just keep in mind, we have a couple of schedule outages um, over the next uh, well, holiday month. Um, for Perlmuter, you have scheduled maintenance on the December 20th, January 17th. Uh, HPSS, well, yesterday had a maintenance. And then a scheduled maintenance will be on January the 3rd as well. Uh, so please be sure to Pay attention to those announcements so you are not negatively impacted when resources aren't available, as well as you can check the message of the day um, at NURSE for um, all of our system messages and system statuses as well. Okay, any questions um, or any um, anyone want to add anything to the announcements or the calls for participation that we might not have, we might not have uh, mentioned? Okay, all right, well, we will keep it moving then. And so next up we have from our group, uh, Helen, who is going to discuss the allocation year transition, as well as our nurse training strategy as well. Helen, you good to go? And I can, do you want me to, sh to allow for you to control or do you want me to just control for you? Um, let me do my slideshow so it's easier. Okay, all right, sounds good. So, uh, yeah, my name is Helen. Uh, have I shown my video also? Yeah, you're showing your video. We're not seeing the <laughs> screen. Right. Mm -hmm. Slideshow. Yeah, my name is Helen. He work in the user engagement group that uh, Rebecca is the, direct, is the group lead. And same as Charles. Talk about allocation year transition. So the uh, cover allocation year allocations of this year. Uh, it's time period. Not, um, and, share your screen yet, Helen. Yeah, right. I do have to do that. This is the allocation year transition talk um, slideshow. I'll cover the allocation year uh, details, uh, including transition process, uh, what happens on the day of the, its start day, and what, are there any changes in the uh, AYA 2024 and what happens to discontinued users? The allocation year usually starts the third week in January on Wednesday and ends on Tuesday the next year, of again, the third week. Um, so this year it starts January 17th, 2024. Uh, remember the allocation year for 2023 do not carry over. Um, as Charles mentioned, the allocation award emails will go out later, either today or tomorrow. And each project would have separate CPU and GPU awards that you cannot um, interchange and, and your jobs on CPU and GPU are charged um, separately. We will start the charge on the second day of the allocation year, which is Thursday, January 18th. So what happens uh, at, at AY transition usually? So first of all, our database needs to be updated with the new allocation data, new projects, users, the storage, um, CPU, GPU uh, allocation awarded. And then the computational systems need to sync up with the IRIS active users data. Then um, also clean up jobs that do not have the continued allocations. System sometimes to under some scheduled maintenance on that day. We may have some policy and software changes. Uh, we have published a transition web page, so more details are there. 
So we have something already happening before AY 2024. For example, no new um, ERCAP project requests after October 3rd. And then the week before um, AY 2024, no more new user account creation or validation. And the PIs need to pay attention. Uh, have, we have a deadline for you, which is January 12th, to you must select which users will continue in your uh, in, in AY 2024 in your project. And you would also select which users have the uh, premium access. We will um, inherit previous data, uh, but you, if you want to uh, make some changes. Uh, we will have um, the page or the in IRS logging, the, this API will happen um, shortly before AY, but not yet. Um, there's also um, in instructions that can find how to do those things. Then on the start day, uh, we will have a short uh, downtime for IRS in the morning. And if you want to see new data, you need to log out and log in again to see your new um, projects, allocations. Um, per murder, we will have a scheduled maintenance on that day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. I'll give you um, more detailed information closer to the dates, whether logging nodes and computer nodes can be available, um, even not the full time period. So Jupiter um, is on, app, but it may be um, impacted depending on the status. If logging nodes are not available, you cannot get access to the logging nodes or same for compute nodes. All the other system and services will be up. Also on the start day, uh, on parameter during maintenance, we will delete a uh, set of jobs that do not have continued projects, or even if you have a project, but the PI forgot to you know, renew you or decide to not to renew you. <laughs> those overrun job that was jobs associated with um, allocation, out of allocation and held jobs older than 12 weeks. Also, when the new data is shown up in IRIS and use uh, PI logging, then PI should be able to uh, decide what is percentage of allocation or exact absolute hours that each user is allowed. We will inherit percentage data from last year, but we will not inherit it hours from last year. The reason behind this is that there were a few huge number specified as hours before the unit was based on format hours. The query hours are much bigger. Uh, the unit was different. And from a, a couple of years inheritance, these, these numbers are there and um, unreasonable. So we decided this year not to inherit hours and use, if 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 you use, uh, the BI still want to uh, specify those, you need, they need to do it um, directly. And if uh, uh, for some reason both percentage um, um, fields and hours are, are specified, then percentage will take uh, take precedence precedence over hours. Uh, so new um, policy for this year, we will have a appropriate use policy is being updated now. Uh, to better reflect the way how NERSC resources are used by our user community. So all users are required to agree, agree to this updated policy. We're still um, ironing out the process, so more details will be applied, provided later how this should be done. Lastly, for discontinued users, um, they were marked as discontinued on the first day, but they still have 60 days uh, time period to log into all the systems for data access so they can clean up and transfer files back to their home institutions. They're not allowed to run batch jobs if uh, they're discontinued. We also have a detailed policy of account deactivation activation process. Okay, so this is my last slide for AY transition. Are there any questions, please? Um, so for ALCC allocations that run off cycle, when when will those, um, like when will the rest of the resources switch over? On Jan 1st or 17th? Uh, January 17th. Okay. Yeah, the details is on this webpage. I'm not mentioning this because it applies to very few users on uh, this page. 
allocation year, there's a section about um, ARCC that you have another half years of allocation. And you'll see it in your allocation project, um, the new IRS database at AY start. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, William, the, it's kind of a hack the way that we do the ALCC because it, it doesn't start at the same time as um, as the rest of our projects. So uh, so that's when we add the second half of, of your time. If you if you need some of that time now, feel free to reach out and we can add it now. Okay. Um, can, can you do that or do I need to reach out to the project manager? Yeah, can you just send an email to allocations at nurse.gov and tell us what you need and we'll help you out. Okay, yeah, thanks. I should, yeah, I should. Uh, we were trying to burn a little hot, so I should hit zero like by the end of the week. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm. So please send in an email and we'll get it fixed up. Awesome, thank you. Hi, Helen. Uh, when you say there's a uh, not active project will discontinue, what does that mean? Uh, do you, uh, this, are you talking about this one or the? Yeah, so, yeah this one. Yeah, so this is no like, the, so if a user do not have any active projects associated with this user, this he, um, they'll become discontinued. Or if they actually belong to an active project, but the PIs did not select continue for them, they'll become discontinued. So if they don't submit the uh, renew last year, uh, October, uh, October, I guess, you know, last mm -hmm. time. Okay. Yeah, you need to have an active, um, a, the 2024 project and those projects get awarded later this week, right? And some users may belong to multiple projects. But some, if some users belong to only one and that that project is not continued, then this user will become discontinued. So this is not related to DOE, you know, they grant, you know, some PI, they have a several, but some PI, they don't have a direct support from DOE. Uh, this is not DOE grant. For, uh, yeah, Yangcheng, we don't have, allocation. sorry, Helen, we, yeah, we don't have any insights into um people's actual monetary grants from DOE. Uh, okay. So we don't we don't know anything about that. So if you're if your grant ends, um, you still have access to nurse for the whole allocation year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if there are no more questions, I'll continue with the second talk. On those user training, give you some updates on that. I'll talk about our training team, goals and strategy, some achievements and the current state of the training and some future planning ideas. So this is our fantastic training team, myself, Lippi, Charles and Shashank. Uh, we do strategic planning, initiating and soliciting of user training. Uh, with contributions by by numerous NERSC staff from each of our, of our groups and our collaborations with other HPC centers and vendors. Our goal is to provide knowledge and, and allow our users to effectively use our NERSC resources. We would go by exam our personas and use those data to inform us to provide uh, training topics ideas. Uh, personas meaning different profiles of user types, like novice users, advanced users, data, simulation, PIs, and et cetera. Considerations in our planning include user need, the impact, user technical levels and personas, learning styles, and our staff resources, as well as collaboration with other centers and vendors and developers. So I want to show you that we have had significant increase in number of training and attendees since 2018. You can see that um, there's a three colors on the left, in the left plot, um, number of events. So the blue color is NERSC hosted. It's like twice, about two X. 
But then also we have now co-host collaboration with other centers, especially Oak Ridge and, and ALCF. So those are events colored in orange. And then green colored events are solely that nurse users are freely joining events hosted by other centers. So this gives us a, a significant decrease of um, like staff um, effort, but also increase ex um, accessibility of trainings to our users. Um, number of training um, attendees have, also increase. I have a question about this. There is a significant increase starting in 2020 or so about the number of training attendees. Can you, I would think that's a direct consequence from all the online training versus in person. Do you have any any? Yeah, I was going to explain why 2020 has a huge boost over 2020. Okay. We have actually had a bunch of um, CUDA series training and Open ACC training series. That was like uh, altogether twelve of them in in 2020 and less so these type of training in 2021. We still had ongoing, I think, four more of open and um, uh, the CUDA training in the series because those happens um, monthly. And also in 2020, we have had a um, AI um, machine learning school, which had attracted mm. more than 500 users. So that's a big jump over in 2020. Yeah, I remember in 2020, you had a couple of those uh... GPU hackathons. Okay. I also want to show you that you have expanding depths and breadth of our, our offerings. So these two kind uh, of plots quite busy. I'm just trying to explain here. On x-axis as type of cat topics of, of trainings. So I uh, we, we categorize into five using systems, uh, programming models and tools, applications, data analytics, and other trainings. On the y-axis is difficulty of levels. So in 2022, you can see so many more dots here or circles. Each circle represents an event. And the size of the circle or the color, greenish, yellowish, meaning more attendees for each event. This is just giving you a visual. Um, the next two slides showing you the training's coverage for different personas. You don't have to read the, the events, details, uh, names of the, them, but then the personas, we, we uh, categorize them as novice data user, novice simulation user, advanced data user, advanced simulation user, PIs, vendors, and DOE uh, nurse leadership. So each of the green box, meaning uh, an event touches upon this type of uh, personas of users. Okay. Um, these are 2022 trainings. Some of them has a little mark there, meaning this is a training series, or like five sessions here. And some of them, for example, GPU for Science Day or AI for uh, uh, Quantum Day, Data Day, I, we uh, cat categorize as touches upon all, all, all personas. Some of them are like new user training, um, diff some, uh, HIP training, for example, um, touches upon more advanced users, et cetera. And this table also showing offering a variety of topics, uh, same categories here as in one of visual that um, the categories using system, programming models, tools, applications, analytics, and other type of trainings. Again, you don't have to read um, the titles of each training. Uh, these, these are what have happened in 2022. I want to give you, show you an sample user pathway uh, to uh, advance from a novice data user to progress into an advanced data user. Maybe you could follow this uh, pathway of our training, attend a new user training using Perlmutter, and the data day um, offers details, um, software, and and packages that uh, in the data area, and also best practices of using these tools, followed uh, along with the hands-on per in-person uh, touch of um, work on your own um, data needs with our staff and the workflows training uh, offers all sorts of um, available workflows for, especially for data needs. And then you may be able, and the user may also attend a bootcamp um, AI for science and offers the, the fundamental AI, um, AI uh, tools uh, suite. This is offered by NVIDIA. And then there's a, a GPU hacks on extensive 
intensive uh, multi days, usually three or four days. Of, um, bring your applications. We can bring your data applications over uh, with help of nurse staff mentors and vendor mentors. Mm -hmm. GPU for Science Day, you can listen to all the peers talking about their uh, data applications, their best practices of, of porting to GPU. And similarly, from novice simulation user to becoming an uh, advanced simulation user, again, user training and migrating from quality promoter to promoter training, um, especially on the GPU side. And then attend an unwaste GPU programming bootcamp offered by NVIDIA teaching you or um, multi -way, multiple ways of GPU programming, including CUDA, OpenCC, OpenP, um, a standard uh, language and tools. And then was a, um, a exercise to to do as a boot camp, and op attend OpenMT offload sessions, modern Fortran basics, Kodi and HPE optimization tools actually are available tools to automatically uh, insert OpenMT and and GPU off offload directives and OpenACC directives as well, and attend a hackathon and listen to GPUs for Science Day um, talks, for example. Now I want to talk about a few new scopes that we are training team is exploring. Um, in the past August, we had our first DOE Intro to HPC bootcamp that outreach to minorities community. Um, and we worked on students worked on energy justice based projects. So this is also a you know workforce training for our next generation HPC professionals. Um, we may look into something similar in the future as well. And then also, uh, usually um, up to now, we we teach majority based on using our system, but we also think we should we could also reach um, to teach users on some pre HPC training, such as uh, basic computing knowledge, and to establish, uh, establish solid foundation prior to use our systems. Um, Learning management system has lots of advantages for centralized access to learning materials, asynchronous learning, progress track tracking, and even could allow certification, maybe a test or a completion of course. So we are currently evaluate, evaluating Canvas LMS um, for use in our nurse training. Uh, we'll be gradually uh, adding a couple um, courses and then um, more in the future. So longer term, term uh, planning strategy, would, we would like to align our training strategy with our NERSC 9 and NERSC 10 system. NERSC 9 is Parmater, NERSC 8 was Corey. So NERSC 10 is uh, currently doing current. Um, so the, 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 the needs of our different systems, NERSC 9 is still the GPU focus. We have simulation and data users that still will continue to uh, training to move work workload to GPUs on programming models using our systems and applications, uh, such as uh, portability series that uh, we, we are currently having as well. NERSC 10 would have more integrated workflow requirement, support our DOE integrated research uh, initiative and AI learning workloads. So our trainings on workflows, spin, super facility, containers, such as um, these type of training more. Again, we would also consider these factors that I've shown earlier. Um, we have actually about collaborations, just want to say a couple of words. We have um, formalized uh, formal, we have established formal collaborations with DOE labs, uh, such as Oak Ridge and, and Argonne. That's why you're seeing so many trainings that are offered and co-offered by, by each of centers. And we are actually currently exploring more collaborations with more centers, um, other HPC centers. Then um, also with uh, vendor collaborations, we do um, tailor training highly to uh, fit our nurse user needs. So a quick table of showing ongoing training ideas with these strategic goals, GPUs, portability, IRI, integrated research initiative, workflows, AI and learning, containers, and HPC pipelines, all the other you know, trainings. So these are the things that we have um, in our mind to explore for, for 2024 and ongoing trainings. So lastly, I just show, want to show you our um, some materials that you can take a look. We have current uh, upcoming training events page. Um, you can find the ones already published, publicly announced. 
those are the under planning. We're not sure up there yet, but everything have um, finished will be moved to the past training event and you can choose filter by year and go in to find slides, recordings, materials. And recordings will usually already be published onto the YouTube channel, including this uh, meeting. Um, the YouTube channel here, NERSC Training for HPC, uh, we, we also publish our captions professionally, uh, all of those. And there's a training events archive page and materials page. We also have published a page, journal paper on best practice for NERSC training. So you can find the 10 best practice there, including you know topics, consideration, collaboration, um, publication, uh, materials, and can, um, format, uh, um, Q&A, all these things, and slides there. So this is all I have. I'd like to, we welcome any suggestions, comments, and ideas on our training. So thank you. Thank you, Helen. Uh, did anyone have any uh, questions or comments? we really like to definitely get more um, feedback and um, thoughts from the community on the type of trainings that everyone would like to see moving forward. And as Helen mentioned, we're trying to work on a strategy to help users maybe advance from the novice HPC user to a more advanced. And with our strategy within LMS, we're looking to create um, um, micro modules that can help um, up, up skill and up train our users. And also with the Canvas LMS that allows for us to offer kind of like a gamification with badging for credentials to match um, user training with, uh, with the skills needed and you can get a digital credential for that. So we're looking for ideas and um, any recommendations that any of you would have on ways we can further um, enhance and continue to improve our training. So thank you for the update, Helen. So Charles, I see the next slide is probably the last one. I'll just show it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it has this, you know, upcoming topics, including a session on training and, and docs options, suggestions. Yeah, so we'll, and again, we're looking for recommendations on our talks moving forward for our monthly meetings. So please be sure to let us know if there's a specific topic, uh, tool, or something that you would like us to have a speaker or someone, nurse staff present on moving forward. And um, with that also, uh, please be sure to use the forms below to nominate a topic and also submissions for science highlights. And um, if there are no other questions, that concludes our December monthly meeting. And I think the next slide is kind of like a little holiday wrap up, Helen. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So happy holidays, everyone. Um, hopefully everyone has a safe and enjoyable holiday and you take some time off, try to give your mind the rest from doing science and we look forward to seeing everyone next month um, and in 2024 for our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day and week. I'll see you tomorrow in person. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, see exactly. You. See you all then. Want to stop recording first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>